Hey, that's my guy, Carlos Pena. So it's the Red Sox and Rays in today's edition of Got Team, also known as the last two teams of Chaim Bloom. Uh, Bloom spent 15 years in the Rays baseball ops department before leaving for Boston in October of last year. He was just named the Red Sox chief baseball officer. So at the end of the season, Carlos, do you think Bloom will be happy that he left Tampa Bay for Boston? Um, absolutely, Chris. I think uh, he's thinking long term. Uh, of course, he wants to win this year. There's no doubt about it. But I think he's thinking more in the lines of 10 years, the next decade. You know, how many championships can we win? And they sure have some very young pieces in that ball club like Bogarts, like Devers, you know. Uh, Chris Sale, I understand, is going through some uh, issues there. Um, Jenny Martinez uh, is still uh, with the ball club. But looking forward, I think Devers and uh, Bogarts are one of those pieces that are most definitely going to be pillars in the organization. And he's going to make moves, Chris. He's going to make moves. We're looking next 10 years. I think that's his mentality, not the immediate future, even though he most definitely wants to compete in 2020. So this is a two-part answer. If you're looking at it just in a vacuum in 2020, the answer will be yes, he will regret it. Yes. Or no. no. <laughs> he, or no, he won't be happy that he left. I guess that's the answer. But yes, long term, you're right. Just because of the financial implications. In each of the last five years, the Rays have ranked in the bottom four in terms of payroll. They were dead last for opening day payroll a year ago, about 53 million and change. Meantime, Boston, the last five years, they've ranked in the top five in payroll. So they'll be ready to spend some dough after this season. Who knows? Maybe they'll bring back Mookie Betts, the guy they just traded. So long term, he will be happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Up next, we know that the Rays, they just come at you from all angles with power arms and different kinds of pitchers, all sorts of stuff. Who is the most important pitcher? in 2020 for the race well that's a good question but uh obviously you got the obvious choices more than snell and glass no but i'm going to go with anderson big anderson right here coming over from the mm. marlins was extremely impressive and look if he if, I, i've seen him pitch right the way the ball comes out of his hand and i can see how he commands that upper part of the strike zone and he throws straight over the top ball seems to rise just like that pitch right there and he could be virtually un unhittable. He has that uh, up in the zone fastball paired up with that's very nasty, looks like a split, Chris, but I actually think it's like a curveball, hard slider straight down. And it comes out of exactly the same line, the same trajectory So the hitter, has no clue what it is. All they see is a, a ball. It could either be 100 at the top of the zone, or it could just drop off the table. That is very difficult to prepare for and to react to. So you gotta pick one or the other. This guy's the X factor in that whole entire staff, Nick Anderson. All right, well, I'm going to pull a Kevin Millar here, and I'm going to take one of the obvious answers here. It's Tyler Glass now, who's 26 years old. Now, as of right now, he's one of three Rays players that has yet to attend a workout, so we'll see how that plays out. But let's remember what sort of start he got off to in mid-May before he dealt with a flexor tendon issue. He did come back for the playoffs, got knocked around a little bit by the Houston Astros, certainly in that decisive game. But this guy's got all the talent in the world. He's got great makeup. If you were to physically build a pitcher, this is it. I mean, dude's like seven foot three, and he throws a hammer, and he's got a fastball to live with. And I like his mentality. He's California cool, but he's playing on the East Coast. So I, I think that he's the guy that you have to uh, focus on in 2020. All right, last Good one. Pick. Uh, everybody remembers that Wade Boggs started his career. His first 10 seasons were in Boston, and he lost the 86 World Series and was in tears on the bench. A lot of people don't remember he had his 3,000th hit as a Tampa Bay Ray, a home run where he mwah, kissed the dish down in Florida. So which image of Wade Boggs is more memorable to you? Um, just with him, with the, with, with the Red Sox. Yes, that, that, that is, I've always pictured him as a Red Sox. When I think Wade Boggs, I'm thinking of him hitting bullets and missiles off of the Green Monster, and he just peppered that wall. It made his career. He's a Red Sox for life, in my mind, always. Well, yeah, but that, that shot of him crying on the bench, I was 15 when I saw that. That was, uh, that was one that will stick with me forever.